really are kind of the similar things that we've heard in the past. He's kind of listed off the party's uh, achievements over the last five years, talking about things like environmental improvements, military buildup, uh, economic growth, diplomatic successes abroad. That's kind of the, the script for these kind of speeches. But what's different about this, I think, is uh, Xi Jinping's real focus on the party controlling every aspect of society. One of the things that you've seen is his continued emphasis saying that all of the things that we've achieved over the last five years can only continue if the Communist Party has absolute control over all aspects of society. And many would argue that Xi Jinping has absolute control over the Communist Party. Therefore, it's Xi Jinping himself kind of having absolute control over the, uh, uh, of the entire country and the direction that the country moves forward. And that's what we're looking at here is, is Xi Jinping using this party congress to really cement his status uh, as the most influential, the most impactful Chinese leader, you could argue, since Mao Zedong. And I think that over the next couple of days, depending on what happens here, uh, we could see Xi really cement his status uh, in, in Chinese Communist Party history. Yeah, we could also find out if he names the successor or whether he will stay in power beyond the two terms, which has been the tradition there. I guess if she does emerge with absolute power, the question which follows, how will he use that power? Yeah, I mean, I think you're going to see, you know, him continue to try and do the same things that he's done over the last five years, really centralize the government, centralize power within the government, continue this nationalistic trend uh, within the culture here, continue to build up the military, kind of try and get China to continue its ascent to kind of go mano a mano with the United States in terms of being the most powerful country in the world. But you mentioned it there, John, what he does with it moving forward, can he stay on past 2022? Will he go find some other way to keep power in China? That's what a lot of China watchers here are going to be looking for. An emerging global statesman or a ruthless authoritarian, protector of the everyman or the enemy of human rights. Xi Jinping, China's president, inspires many an opinion as he sets up to begin his second five-year term. The 64-year-old spent decades rising through party ranks, a so-called princeling son of a politician who fought alongside Mao Zedong during China's communist revolution. During his rise to power, he honed what many experts call a fierce dedication to the orthodox ideology of the Communist Party. Often called one of China's last true believers, he has sought to cement the party's grip on control since taking office in 2012. He's done that in a number of ways. A popular anti-corruption campaign targeted graft among government officials, a move also widely seen as a way for Xi to purge political enemies. He's also cracked down on dissent, targeting anyone publicly critical of the government. Regime critics have been imprisoned. Some allege they've been tortured, though the government denies that. Meanwhile, online censorship and state control of all domestic media have strengthened. But not everything is under Xi's control. North Korea's nuclear ambitions, a slowing economy, and looming trade disputes with the U.S. will all test the president's mettle. But the cult of Xi, as it's called, remains strong in China. His face is everywhere across the country. And the growth of his own personal power has mirrored the rise of China worldwide, a trend Xi Jinping will do his best to continue.